Okay, so what's coming at us now is various other combinations of the chain rule and other rules. What we have here is x cubed times, product rule, 3x minus 1 all squared. And when you get this part, you see you have a square with another function inside it. So we're going to have chain rule when we get to that piece. But at the, at the top level, this is a product. It's x cubed times 3x minus 1 all squared. And so the product rule says we do first times the derivative of the second plus second piece times the derivative of the first piece. What does that mean for us? The first piece is x cubed. The derivative of the second piece, here's where the chain rule kicks in, out comes the red, and we do 2 times 3x minus 1 to the first times 3, that's the derivative of the inside part, right? Because first, first you see this as something squared, and so you do 2 times something to the first. Then the chain rule says, now do the derivative of that something you glossed over. There it is. We'll clean that up in a moment. But first, carrying on with the product rule, we did first to d second. Now we do second, which is 3x minus 1 squared, times the derivative of the first part. It's x to the third, so 3x squared would be our derivative there. And now we clean up. 2 times 3 is 6, so we get 6x cubed times 3x minus 1 plus 3x squared. 3x. I'm just changing the order here because monomials first looks nicer to me. And that's a good place to stop. We could factor this. You could pull out a 3x squared and a 3x minus 1 and do some factoring and clean up, but I think we've done the part that we really wanted to practice, so let's call it right there and get on to the next one. The next one is 5x to the 1 half. We need that power to be a number so we can power rule it. And then we have 2x squared minus 3. Okay, so this is a quotient, of course which means its derivative is going to be bottom. I'm not labeling this time. Let's see if it works. Bottom times derivative of the top. The top, this piece right here, requires chain rule. It's got two steps. The first step is power. 1 half 5x to the minus 1 half. The second step is now do the derivative of the inside part, the 5x. So just a 5 pops out at the end. So what were we doing here? Bottom d top minus top d bottom happens next. Top d bottom. The derivative of the bottom would be 4x. The minus 3 has no effect because it turns into 0x to the minus 1. And bottom squared. 2 x squared minus 3, all squared. I don't think we can do a ton to clean this up, but let's try at least a little bit. We have 1 half times 5, and then we have 5x to the minus 1 half, and 2x squared minus 3. Is that everything? Got that got that, got that. Yep, that's all for the first term. And for the second term we have 4x times 5x to the half. And all that is over 2x squared minus 3 all squared. I don't see any obvious cancellations. We could double the entire top if, the, if this fraction bugs you, and it does bug me a little. You could double all this, and then you'd end up with 5 and minus 8 and a 2 in the denominator. Just multiply the top and bottom by 2. But stopping here wouldn't be so bad either.